Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on analyzing and interpreting data, level two, quantitative analysis. Quantitative just means number analysis. And so as we're analyzing and interpreting, we're gonna be looking at data. This is gonna be quantitative data. But where did this data come from? It's gonna come from an investigation. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to do some analysis of data, especially numbers data that comes from an investigation. First thing you always wanna do is look at the data and then you wanna organize all the data. If it's like from one individual or a group of individuals, we wanna put that all together in one data table. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna analyze the data. So when we analyze the data, we're really gonna be looking for two things. We're gonna be looking for patterns. What patterns do we notice in the data? And a lot of those will be looking for similarities and differences. And then we're gonna look at relationships within the data. So that's the analysis part. Once we've done that, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna do some interpretation. So we're gonna interpret the data. What does the data actually tell us? And then finally, what predictions could we make based on the data? So after watching this video, you should be able to look at data gained in an investigation from something like a bouncing ball, or maybe this investigation with magnets and the number of spheres that they can hold. I'm gonna start with an investigation on these cars and a ramp. And then you'll get a chance to do the same with an investigation on cup stacking. So let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so I've got a bunch of data. You can think of these are data tables that were collected by different groups. So groups one, two, and three. Looks like in this investigation, what they were doing is they were letting the car the cars roll down a cart. Uh, they were doing it from different heights and they were seeing how far it would roll. So the first thing that I wanna do is write down what is the data that I'm actually analyzing and interpreting. So in this case, the data that I'm looking at is the results of a car and ramp investigation. So we're looking at data from that. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna take all of this data from the different groups and I wanna organize it into one data table. A really easy way to do that is when you look at data, some of this data is gonna be data that's varying, so the numbers are different, so 14 to 23 or nine to 14. But then I wanna look for the data that's gonna remain the same. So it looks like in all of these, they all changed uh, the height of the car. And so let me show you how I would organize the data then. Okay, so the headings that I'm putting at the top is going to be, they all started with different heights, so that's gonna be the first column. And then we have a different distance from the white car to the blue car to the red car. Lots of times I like to put the units in parentheses underneath that. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna put the data or we wanna populate the data in this data table. So let me do that. Okay, now I've organized the data in the data table, so I can kind of put that to the side. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna to start to analyze the data. So this is where I start to make sense of the data. And so a really good way to start analyzing the data, the first thing to do is just look for patterns. And so when you're looking, especially in different groups, a really good way to look for patterns is to look for similarities and differences. So let me do that. So the first pattern that I notice is that all the cars went further from larger heights. And so as we increase the heights, a pattern I'm noticing is that they're all increasing. So as I look vertically, they all increase. That'd be a similarity between all of the different cars. Now let me find a difference. So what is something that I notice? And, and as I look across, I find that at the starting height of two or four or six or eight, there's never a time where they had the same exact results. And so that would be a difference that I notice. And so really to figure out patterns, you start to look up and down and then you can look uh, side to side. Next thing I wanna do as I analyze is I wanna start looking at relationships. So what are some relationships that I notice as I look at the data as well?
So a relationship that I wrote down is when I compare the, in this case, when I compare the white car to the blue car, it increased a greater amount, so eight centimeters, than the blue car, which only increased five centimeters. I also said the white car increased less, eight centimeters, than the red car increased, in this case, which is going to be nine centimeters. And so when I'm really looking for relationships and doing quantitative analysis, I wanna use the numbers in my relationships. Let me write another relationship. Another relationship that I wrote down is each of the cars, so white car, blue car, red car, each of them went the farthest distance from the eight centimeter starting height. And so when you're looking at relationships, you're comparing one column to another. The last thing I wanna do as I look at data then is I need to interpret. So I try to look at the sum of the data. So when you're analyzing, you're making sense of the data. When you interpret, you're basically saying, what story does this data tell? And so let me write down an interpretation. Okay, as I look at the data, there's a lot of data, a lot of patterns and relationships, but the big thing that I wrote is that even though the individual cars had different results, and we saw that some of that here and here, um, all cars went further from further heights. So as it got higher, they went a further distance in each of these. And so that's how you interpret. You look at the sum of it, and then what does this tell me? Last thing I can do when I look at data is I could use this to make a prediction. Let me make a quick prediction. Okay, so for the prediction, I noticed right here that when you were looking at the first photograph, it had not just three cars, but four cars. So the prediction that I wrote is if group four data were analyzed, it would follow a similar pattern and increase with higher heights. And I just happened to have group four data on that yellow card as well. And you can see that as the amount of height increased, the distance that it traveled went from 10 to 14 to 15 to 17. So it actually looks very similar to the white car. And so what I'm gonna do is now clean all this up and you're gonna have a chance to do the same thing with a different set of data. Okay, now it's your turn. So uh, the data you're looking at here are results from my wife and I. So what we were doing were stacking some cups and we were just seeing how fast we could stack a pyramid that was one cup high, three cups high, and six cups high. So what I would encourage you to do is pause the video, then go look at the data, write down what the data is, organize the data, and then analyze the data, and then interpret the data. Okay, the first thing I would do is look at the data. So it looks like for both Paul and Laura, there are two trials. And so I always, when I'm trying to put data together as I look for, what are the things that are the same? Because our results are gonna be different. And you can see the things that are the same are gonna be the, the cups in the pyramid. And so let me put together a data table. Okay, so the headings that I have uh, are both our cups and pyramid and then the results from Paul and Laura. You can notice one thing that I forgot to do, I hope you did that, is I forgot to write down what data are we actually looking at. And now I wanna put the data in so we can look at that. Okay, so now we've got all the data together in one data table. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start analyzing. What am I looking for? I'm really looking for patterns. And so as I look for patterns, lots of times I'm looking, just what are some things that you notice as you look in the vertical? And then what are some things you notice when you look in the horizontal? So let me write down some of the patterns that I notice.
So as AI analyzed, the first thing I noticed a similarity is that in all cases when you went in uh, pyramids that went from one to three to six, uh, building pyramids takes longer with more cups. That'd be the first pattern I noticed. And then another pattern I wrote is the increase is not consistent for more cups. A lot of time when you look at the numbers, it goes from one to four to six. So it's like three second increase, two second increase. Here is three second increase, four second increase, four second, four second. So there is an increase, but it's not a consistent amount is what I'm writing for a pattern. Now I wanna start looking at relationships and then I'm gonna be comparing trials and I'm gonna be comparing different people. So let me write that down. Okay, so the relationship that I wrote down is, the first one is that there's more variability for the six cup pyramid. So if we look at these times, it was I think a, a variance of 2.5 seconds versus in the one cup pyramid, the variance was only one second. So it's more variable as we get more cups. And then I also wanna make sure I point this out to my wife is that Paul had the fastest time for each pyramid. So now that we've gone through and analyzed the data, the next thing that we want to do is we want to interpret the data. So what does this data actually mean? And so let me write down an interpretation that I have. So what I wrote for an interpretation, when we look at the sum of the investigation, what I wrote is that for both participants in the investigation, stacking more cups takes more time. And if we really want to be quantitative about it, it's going to take roughly three to four seconds, we would say, with each additional uh, pyramid. Next thing I want to do is I want to make some kind of a prediction. Okay, so my prediction is if another participant were to gather data, so if somebody else were to build some pyramids like this, my prediction is that their slowest time would be in the six cup pyramid. And thankfully we do have another bit of data. So this is from another participant. And if we look at the data, their data is slower in the first trial, but you can see their slowest time overall is going to be in both uh, trial one and trial two. Or I guess actually it's very similar here. So in uh, their slowest time is gonna be in trial one. And so that's the power of looking at data. Um, what you really want to do is, number one, analyze it. What are the patterns we see? What are the relationships we see? Before you start to make some interpretation and prediction. And you could even make predictions. Uh, what if we build the next pyramid? You could, how many, how many cups are going to be that? And then how, how, uh, how long is it going to take to build that? So now that you've done that, you could look at some other data. We've got some other data sets you could look at with a bouncing ball, or you could look at some magnets that are attracting spheres. But that's how you do quantitative analysis. You organize the data, you look at the numbers, and I hope that's helpful.